to see what did happen in this fight. Now, I'll let you set it up because it was, Ken, I'm glad you notified me of it and I'm glad we can talk about it to our fans. I'm sure that they want to hear about it. It was one of the most... Now, this is a big statement coming from Teddy Atlas. I've, you know, I've seen a hell of a lot of fights. It might be the greatest comeback I ever saw. It might be. It might be. It's right up there. It's right up there with, with Corrales, what he did against Castillo in their first fight, and what both Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti did, taking turns doing in their first epic fight. And it even takes me back to the, to the 50s, believe it or not, where, I think it was the 50s, where the great old Mongols, the great Archie Moore, who has almost 300 fights, he was about 45 years old somewhere, and he was fighting Yvonne Darrell, I believe, who was in his 20s. Moore got dropped three times in the first round, 45 years old. It's over. It's over. It is over. But it wasn't over because Archie Moore didn't say. The great Mongols did not say that it was over. And that's how some people are. That's how some people are special. It's not over till they say it's over. Like Yogi Berra said, it ain't over till it's over. And man, Ozzy Moore came back, and I believe, if my memory is correct, he knocked out Darrell in the 14th round, back in the day when they still fought 15. So with all of that, I'm telling you that this might have been the greatest comeback I have ever witnessed. It only went two rounds, but that two rounds was like a lifetime. It was it was like it was like reading three novels, <laughs> uh, ver- really. It, it was it, it told a lifetime story of both men. Go ahead, uh, kid, take it and set it up, and I'll, I'll go. Matt Schnell, Su Mudarji, Chinese fighter. Uh, first round, good scrap, a lot of strategy involved. Uh, I think Schnell might have been a two and a half to one underdog, if I'm not mistaken. I'll I'll double check that, but. Um, Sumudaji looked good. I mean, I thought he had a slight edge. They come out in the second round, southpaw, Sumudaji, orthodox for uh, Schnell, and they're both hitting each other with perfect lefts and rights, right down the middle. Like you would always say, the southpaw killer, straight down Main Street. Well, Sumudaji got his timing and distance down in the second round, and he was cracking Schnell with straight, straight lefts, in tight with, with hard elbows, and he rocked him, I'd say, what do you think, three or four times? I mean, he was on rubber legs. Maybe, maybe more, maybe rocked. more. I was like, oh, this is over. The, the ref, if you watch, I watched it back again when I got home. The ref is just about, he's one punch from stopping that fight. Schnell hits him with a straight right, right down Main Street, rocks him, jumps on him, just like a python, gets him to the ground, puts him in a triangle, and just, st- first he mounts him and starts smashing him with elbows and slicing him up. Uh, Sumudaji gets out of the mount, reverses it, gets on top, and right as he gets on top, Chanel snaps a triangle on him and starts lighting him up with elbows again. And at one point, he's choking him with the, with the triangle, and Chanel tells the ref he's out. Ref grabs uh, Sumudaji's arm. He's, it's limp. When It was interesting. When Chanel let go of the triangle, when Sumudaji is laying there across one of Chanel's legs, his face is just battered. There's blood everywhere. And I was watching it with one of my sons and I said, this guy looks like he just went through the windshield of a car. It's just the blood is everywhere. He's unconscious. Incredible fight to your point. Like people in the ring were like people in the arena. You could tell like, all right, you know, any second now the ref has to stop this. He's, this guy's getting killed. Matt Schnell, to his credit, refused to give up. And uh, man, what a finish. Like you said, one of the best comebacks I've ever seen in UFC for sure. Incredible. Listen, it, it was just, it was one of those wow moments. Just like, wow. By wow. the way, Muda, M- M- Sumadaji was a uh, minus 275 favorite. It was a close first round. At the end of the round, I, I had Schnell had a little edge, a uh, very close round. But I thought he landed some big clean strikes while he was on top of Sumajaji while they were on the mat, uh, vying for position in the first round. And then just the wow started. The wow, 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 wow. Um, and it never stopped. Like I said, one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. It, it, it's just, uh, it was extraordinary. Uh, he, I mean, 
as you said, uh, Silva Johns, he, he, he used his long reach in his second round. Uh, his southpaw left hand, the power hand, you know, you could turn into it. Uh, and, he, and he hurt him. He, he hurt Schnell. Uh, he had caught him. I don't think it was recognized. He caught him before that with a right hook. But the big left hand was the one that was recognized. And he dropped him. And, and then he goes on to, you said it, I made it like seven, eight times. Whatever, it doesn't matter. He hurts him, he wobbles him uh, another six, seven, eight times, whatever. And not only with clean punches on the chin, Ken, but with clean elbows. Uh, I, I mean, maybe the greatest chin and recuperative powers I've ever seen displayed uh, by a fighter. I've seen a lot of fighters that are extraordinary. I mean, Muhammad Ali had one of the greatest chins you ever see. Um, so many of these great fighters. I mean, the way Arturo Gatti used to get hurt and recover and Mickey Ward, or, you know, uh, just just so, so many of these guys. But this was up there with the greatest to to have a chin that could take those kind of bone on bone. I mean, elbows is bone, nothing but bone uh, on a chin. Uh, you talk about mental toughness and will and a non-giving will attitude to just refuse to give in and go down. Um, that was on display. For me, you know what it was, Ken? Again, he was teaching us. It was a teaching learning moment for, for us uh, normal humans to see how far the human spirit can reach, to see how extraordinary it can be. Where he was being taken, he being Schnell Ken, was being taken down a corridor, a dark corridor. It was getting darker and darker and darker. That's how you get knockouts. Unless you get hit a blind shot you never see and the lights go out. You get taken down a corridor. He was getting taken down a corridor, and at the end of the corridor, he knew what was there. He knew it was the abyss. It was the end. It was the dark room. It was what no fighter wants. It's what no human being wants, quite frankly. And he's being dragged. He's being kicked. <laughs> he's being kneed, uh, whatever, elbow. He's being dragged, pushed, pulled to go down that corridor and he's just fighting it he's refusing to go down there I mean for all intents and purposes for all rights he should have been out but he had a say in this again a teaching moment to all of us we have a say in our journey no matter how difficult how ugly it might be how dark it might be how dangerous it might be how painful it might be we have a say until you give up that say. Remember that. I want people to remember this now. You have a say until you give up that say of what you will do. Yes, you do. And his say was to say no. That's all. No. No. He was not going to be dragged down that corridor.